So Honor is sponsoring an early look. Actually, I don't know if by the time this comes out, it's going to be early at all, but uh, that's not really the point. The point is we are checking out the Honor 10 and I absolutely love doing stuff for Honor because I get to make this joke over and over and over again. Are you ready to do the shoot? For Honor! Hey, which video are you editing right now? Is it the one for honor? No. Hey Tyler, did that product arrive yet? For honor! The one for honor! For honor! So the highlight features of this thing include an octo-core processor, a 19 by nine aspect ratio screen with notch and an NPU or neural processing unit. And it's very, very shiny. Does it look as good on camera as it does in person? Dang. So we'll start with the obligatory unboxing. You get a SIM removal tool, you get a bunch of documentation, you get a, oh. Oh, that's actually kind of a nice touch. They include a case so that at least while you wait for your like, you know, nicer one or whatever, you're not going to get that stupid first scratch on the phone that you're, you're otherwise likely to. It actually includes a screen protector as well. So those kinds of things are always a nice touch. They've got a supercharged power supply right here with, oops, well, uh, I'm sure you'll get one that's compatible with your region and a USB type C cable with an adorable purple inset. Of course, it's no big secret that I think unboxings are boring. So let's have a look at the phone itself. I've actually got a couple of them. I've got that sick purple and blue iridescent, they call it Aurora Gradient or something like that finish. And then I've got a more plain blue one that quite frankly, uh, you should be able to tell by now, but I think this one looks so much better. Looking at the physical layout of the phone, there are a couple of things that I think some folks are going to find polarizing. Like it's really the age of phablets these days, but this is a comfortably one-handable phone. Like you can actually type. Whoa. At least if you got Swift key on anyway, that comes preloaded, which is nice with one hand on it. But I don't know if everyone is gonna like the duplicated home button. So you've got a software one as well as a built-in one in hardware. And that's actually where the fingerprint sensor is. So it bucks the trend in terms of fingerprint sensor. It bucks the trend in terms of headphone jack, which for me anyway, is a really nice inclusion. And then it sticks with the trend for the display notch. I'm happy to see a more handleable option though. And personally, I'm a really big fan of glass backs because even though, actually this one, I think I've already got some fingerprints on, even though they do tend to get fingerprinted up pretty easily, what's nice about the glass is that at least they're easy to clean. Then they're perfect. Another choice they made that's gonna be controversial no matter how you slice it is their use of an IPS display. So right now, the main two choices are OLED or LCD IPS. And they've both got pros and cons with OLED having perfect blacks and the ability to you know, show the time even when the screen is off, for example, with IPS having the advantage of basically no chance of running into burn-in issues. So it's a good IPS. They're boasting 96% coverage of NTSC and it looks after I turned off the Vivid profile that was loaded by default, subjectively really freaking good, but everyone's gonna have their own feelings on a decision like this. Now this is something really interesting that I picked up on. The way that they've implemented the notch is not like pure notch or pure not notch. So you can see that the display stretches up into the notch area when you're vertical, but check this out. It actually does a little trickery thing. See, watch that change to curved. And then it cuts the notch out when you put video in landscape mode, which personally I think is a really nice touch. Another thing that you can actually do while I'm on the subject of cool little, uh, software tricks is you can turn the notch off entirely. 
And there are actually some nice touches as well. Wireless charging isn't supported, but it does support four and a half amp, five volt fast charging. And their facial recognition, it is shockingly fast. So I've got it open here, it's looking for my face. Bam, that's really impressive. And this one's cool. There's a feature on here called Smart Rotate that lets the screen rotation follow the direction of your face. Can your phone do this? And it stays in portrait mode. Cool, right? Anyway, the big feature on the phone is really on the rear shooter. So it's a dual rear shooter. It's got a 16 megapixel F1.8 color sensor and then a 24 megapixel black and white. And the whole thing is powered by their neural processing unit or NPU. So using their NPU, they can actually recognize the subject of a photo and then adjust the way that it looks in order to make it more pleasing. Let's go try it out on a few things, shall we? All right, so let's do some test shots with the AI camera. First, let's do with no AI. Hi, James. I'm trying to do you a, a service here by taking a good picture of you. It's not easy. Now let's turn on AI photography, and it has identified that this is a person, and it looks like it went and applied a background blur effect. So that's an interesting thing for it to do on its own. Let's try some food. That is not very photogenic food, but I'm sure it tastes good. Look at that. It identified food. Thought it was person for a second there. All right, a car should be a pretty easy one. Yep, wow, that did not take long. The instant I turned on AI, it was like, yep, that's a car. Let's find some nature. Dang, nature, you pretty. Yep, I get a little flower icon. So I wanna talk about what an NPU actually does while we have a look at the shots from the AI versus non-AI photo comparison here. Subjectively, I like a more natural look to my photos, so I would probably have it off in many cases, but the underlying technology here is really the big story to me. We've been at the point for a while now where a phone's CPU can be expected to do all of the normal stuff that you'd want from it really well. You know, run the UI smoothly, uh, bring up your apps list, uh, open apps, whatever the case may be, without a ton of perceptible lag. So what an NPU does is it is a specialized processor. It actually gets dedicated silicon that is designed for convoluted neural networks. So this doesn't mean that all of a sudden you can just turn on AI mode and run around in the world with, you know, pointing your phone's camera at things and it's just gonna start to have a broad understanding of the world. But what it does mean is that a neural network model, one that would have to be trained by a very powerful computer, probably in a data center somewhere, can be more easily understood using this kind of client-side neural networking technology. So the powerful server trains the model, creates a simplified version of it that Honor will push to your phone with an update, and then your NPU does what's called inferencing in order to feed that model some new piece of data, like you're pointing your phone at a cat, and then infer what it's supposed to be from the model that it has downloaded. So at this point, the NPU is being used primarily to monitor usage patterns and then optimize the processor's use of power so that you'll get as much battery life as possible out of the phone and to recognize photography subjects with the camera and then adjust the camera settings accordingly. So calling it AI is a little bit optimistic. It's not like it's got like Jarvis built into your phone or anything like that. So right now it has the ability to uh, recognize an animal or a pet, but new models that Honor could push via updates could give it the capability of being able to tell the difference between a cat and a dog and a, 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 a possum, that one's unlikely, but like a possum, for example, meaning that it can, in fact, get smarter over time, even if the actual training doesn't take place on the device itself. So that's pretty much my rundown of the Honor 10. You guys can find a link with more information in the video description. So 
Thanks to Honor for sponsoring this video. Thanks to you guys for watching it. If you guys disliked it, you can hit that button. But if you liked it, hit like, get subscribed, or maybe consider checking out where to buy the stuff we featured at the link in the video description. Also down there is our merch store, which has cool shirts like this one, and our community forum, which you should totally join.